Hey everyone, today we are dealing with the message laser not ready for operation. And if you have encountered this problem before, I will demonstrate to you today how we can solve it effectively and efficiently. Welcome to Measurement Minutes. In this format, I want to make your everyday work easier with tips and tricks. I'm Ekrem, with the company for 17 years, want to share my experiences with you. First, what does the message laser not ready for operation stand for? It indicates that the laser from the transmitter does not reach the receiver. So much for the theory. So how can we rectify the entire thing? I brought you a pair of systems for that purpose. Once the MicroCompact NT and our current flagship, the LC50 Digilog. Using these two models, I will now explain step-by-step step the causes that can be present and we will work through each one individually. In this tutorial, we will go over the three most likely reasons that can lead to the occurrence of this error message. To start, grab a 2.5 Allen key and let's begin with our MicroCompact NT system, starting from the first step of the installation process. In order to complete this task, you will need to loosen all four screws of the dirt covers, one after the other, and then proceed to remove the dirt covers from the designated areas. Prior to commencing work on the system, it is of utmost importance to ensure that the compressed air is turned off, thereby effectively eliminating any remaining compressed air pressure that may be present and could potentially affect the laser during operation. So we have removed the dirt covers from the NT laser. Now we continue with the LC50. Very important that LC50 put away tools. You grasp your index finger and thumb, position them around the dirt cover, give it a slight twist and proceed to unscrew it. We perform the same action on the opposite side and within a short period, you will have the dirt covers in your hand. Now we have successfully removed the dirt covers. What should we do next? Now you can either grab a glasses cleaning cloth or a commercially available microfiber cloth for cleaning. This is extremely important. Please do not use any cleaning agents or substances of any kind. After taking apart the dirt bands and cleaning the laser, we proceed to test the function once more. For this, please, it is extremely important, do not use coolant. Turn off the coolant and run the cycle again. If the cycle has run again and there is no error message, then we can proceed to advance the error search further at this stage of the process without any issues or obstacles. If the error happens again, you have the option to pause the video at this point and kindly get in touch with our service hotline. Now let's proceed to the lens hoods. In case we already have them in our possession, kindly ensure that the seals are devoid of any noticeable damage and there is no observable contamination present. Next, you pick up a compressed air gun. Then, you carefully observe a small opening located right here at the front of the gun. I hope it's visible on the camera, however, you'll definitely find it. That's where you put the air gun on and first apply pressure. Then it is important that this small opening opens here. That means inside there is an illuminated piston. This should open and close when it is being pressed down. If this condition is ensured, we can confidently state that there are no mechanical problems and we can rule out any potential issues of a mechanical nature. Our dirt cover is intact now we arrive at the final and most frequently occurring cause, the pneumatic line. But before we start, let's first rebuild our dirt shields. Please ensure that the following work is performed exclusively by authorized personnel or by your maintenance department. The following problems or issues may potentially occur with the pneumatic line in question. Either cracks in the line or a kink in the line or simply leaky quick couplings can cause issues. This can enable liquid to enter the system and dirty your lenses, which can be problematic. To avoid this issue, I highly recommend either taking a continuous line or utilizing these connectors to extend your pneumatic line. By doing so, 
you can effectively prevent the entry of liquid and keep your lenses clean and under magnet. Then we proceed to that location and exchange the cables. If these lines are easily reachable, you can accomplish it by utilizing a flying line. Otherwise, you might have to relocate it across your table, across your workspace, if it is necessary. If you've done that, important, turn on the compressed air again. If you've turned on the air, you can start the cycle again. If the cycle should run now, everything done correctly, we have identified the problem, so you can replace the line and lay it permanently. So friends, we have reached the end of the video. I hope I was able to help you and you can continue working. If you don't want to miss anything in the future, leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and until then, stay process safe.